already happening. You started doing it the moment I came out, before you heard my voice, before you knew my message. You started forming an opinion, judging the speaker, deciding if you were gonna listen or check out. No wonder we say that the fear of public speaking ranks higher than death. Yes, we'll talk about that later. We used to say that a speaker has 30 to 60 seconds to capture the audience's attention. Not anymore, it is five to 10 seconds. And before I capture your attention, I'd like to give you my attention. A little bit of insight. I am way more comfortable speaking to a room full of friends than I am to a room full of strangers. So I would like your help to transform this theater into a happy, friendly place. We're all friends today, and we're gonna do the friend greeting. In a second, I'd like you to say salam to the person to your right, and hello to the person to your left. Ready, go. Salam. Hello. Let's come back together. Thank you, so many friends in the room. <laughs> Did you know that the great story of human history is that we have so much power within us? Now, if I ask you, what do you deeply care about? What is essential to your core? Do you know why you do what, I, what you do? Each of us has a value that is essential to our core, and we can usually trace it to childhood. The thing that I deeply care about and that is essential to my core has taken me into prisons and all the way to the most prestigious think tanks in Washington, D.C. It has become part of my life mission, my life work, my identity. Let me explain. Several years ago, I was having lunch with a friend, and that was the day that I had an aha moment, an epiphany, a breakthrough. Have you ever had one of those? That was the day that I figured out why I do what I do. She asked me a simple question that I had never asked myself. And I'm not sure if it was her strong voice, her tone, or her inflection, but I'm so grateful for that moment because it was a moment of self-discovery. Do you know what she asked me? Manal, why do you invest so much time doing Toastmasters? The light bulb went off in a big way. It was as if she had pierced my soul. And here's what I told her. I was born in Palestine, and at the age of eight, my family immigrated to the US. And as children, when we would listen to the news, this is long before the 24-hour news cycle, my dad would be at work, and we would call my mom from the kitchen to listen to what was happening. Mama, mama, the news is on. Now, this is back in the 70s. Many of you weren't even born. And when she would come in and watch, she would begin to cry. And as a child, sitting on the floor, watching TV, I would see them bring a spokesperson to speak on behalf of the Israeli side, and he would be articulate, smooth, easy to understand. And when they would bring the spokesperson to speak on behalf of the Palestinian side, heavy accent, broken English, hard to connect with. And I remember as a child saying out loud, why don't we have someone that can speak better on our behalf? My emotional connection to public speaking goes back to the pain of my childhood that I still carry now. And that is why I spend so much time and energy becoming a better communicator and helping others to do the same. Four years ago, 
July of 2015. Very unsuspectingly, I went to the post office to get my mail because I was leaving on a two-week trip. And as I got home, I was quickly going through this rubber-banded stack, and one letter caught my eye. It was handwritten, and that's rare in itself. And there was a rubber stamp in the corner, mailed from a correctional institution. It was a letter from a prison. I stopped what I was doing, read the letter, not realizing it was going to take me on a new path. It was an appeal, a request to come in and start a gavel club or a public speaking club in the prison. It was written with a pen and a prayer. The gentleman had been writing letters for two years praying that somebody would reply. I immediately replied to the letter and with a group of volunteers, several weeks later, we started not one club, but 12. And now, my daily greeting at the gate when I go to the prison is, do you have possession of firearms, weapons, ammunition, cell phones, narcotics, alcoholic beverages, or cash over 60? I often laugh and I think, who would say yes? The question that the inmates ask me frequently is, Manel, you could be spending time near a pool, playing tennis. Why do you come in to the prison? My answer, number one, it's because I can. Number two, I believe God led me into the prison. And number three, I understand marginalized communities. I'm part of one and I value public speaking. I spend an average of eight to 10 hours a week either speaking, listening to speakers, or evaluating speeches. I came across this quote. Ralph Smedley, the founder of Toastmasters said, understanding comes through communication, and through communication, we find our way to peace. It was another light bulb moment. Peace is part of my core. I believe that our highest ideal needs to be working for peace. Now, one of the biggest sins in public speaking is trying to cover too much information. So what I'd like to do is address the phobia, we'll move to the why, the how, the who, and the when. The phobia. Glossophobia is the fear of public speaking. A phobia is an irrational fear. So why do 75 to 80% of people have this fear? And where did this notion come from that the fear of public speaking ranks higher than death? Well, it goes back to a 1973 study the Bushkin Associate Study, where students did rank the fear of public speaking higher. But to truly understand this fear, we have to go deeper. And we know that we have physical human needs, such as water, food, shelter, and we have our non-physical human needs. For example, meaning, purpose, love, connection, belonging, self-worth. Well, Maslow got it wrong. We need to flip that hierarchy. Our need, we know now, is more important for non-physical than physical needs. So now, with this phobia, what is it? It is a rational fear, because it is a fear of being judged, it's a fear of being rejected, it's the fear of being evaluated negatively. The irrational fear of public speaking centers around what if I say the wrong thing and the audience comes after me? What if they humiliate me? The irrational fear of public speaking is that it's not life-threatening. It's not like having a car coming and hitting you. And when you speak in front of family and friends, you don't have the same fear. So a tip I can offer you, whenever you can, make the audience your friend. Secondly, it's a skill, which means we need to practice. 
And I'll give you a tip from the prison. What we say, it's fun, it's easy, it's easy, it's fun. Let's ask ourselves, why do we want to invest in this skill? Well, did you know that people will equate your intelligence to how well you speak? Did you know that 15% of promotions to management never happen because of the fear of public speaking? Did you know that the better the speaker, the more influence you have? So I would say that there's enough evidence to tell us that there's a real value. And if you don't believe me, let's ask billionaire Warren Buffett. He says this is the one skill that if you invest in it, will increase your value by 50%. It will boost your career more than any other skill. The US Labor Department tells us that in survey after survey, employers want communication skills. Think with me about speeches that shook the world. The classics, Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream, John F. Kennedy, we choose the moon. And Nelson Mandela, I am prepared to die. Wednesday, July 28th, 2004. I'm driving my daughter to school, listening to the radio, National Public Radio, NPR. And there's this buzz about a speech that happened the night before at the Democratic National Convention by a senator from Illinois. For Barack Obama, that one speech put him in the limelight. Before the speech, he was an unknown senator. After the speech, we started to think of him as the next US president. Communication is no longer a soft skill. It is a must-have skill. It is an essential skill. It's a fundamental skill. It's a must-have skill. Think about someone that has excellent communication skills. They have great charisma. They can be very dangerous in influence, but they have a twisted worldview. Can you think of anyone like that? <laughs> yes, Hitler. So we tell you that we really need to understand the power in our communication. So you say to me, okay, I'm, I'll buy into that. How do we become great communicators? Well, if I ask each of you right now on your own, can you come up with 10 top tips to deliver a great presentation? And this is the same exercise I do with the men in the prison. And we can come up easily with more than 100 tips, no exaggeration, from eye contact and posture and smiling. But let's go beyond the basics. When you are passionate about a topic and you immerse yourself in it, the magic is that you start to come up with your own discoveries and your unique discoveries and contributions to that field. What I have noticed is that you can actually understand the psychology, the creativity of public speaking, and mostly understanding the audience. I see a tense audience right now, and I thought we were all friends. So my recommendation, when we say know your audience, that's very superficial. I say feel your audience, lead your audience, preframe your audience. Example, I'm going to speak about a controversial topic today, peace. I'm going to speak about an exciting topic today, peace. I'm going to speak about a noble topic today, peace. This is what we call salting the audience. Pay attention to your word, word play. Words carry energy and words have secrets. Let's ask ourselves about the who and the where. Whenever we're speaking about the who here, we are talking about the next generation. And we cannot speak about the next generation 
without speaking about technology. And specifically, what we're talking about is artificial intelligence, AI, augmented reality, AR, and virtual reality, VR. What an exciting time, because for the last 100 years, we've really had very little teachings in the area of public speaking, but this is changing with the next generation. Imagine that we already have the artificial intelligence that can tell us how we're connecting with our audience. Are we engaging the audience? Do we appear trusted? Is the message clear? Now, when we want to practice our speech, we have to do it in front of a group of friends, our family, a Toastmaster club, a coach. Well, with augmented reality and virtual reality, we can practice in front of millions. And how exciting that this enhancement will not replace the speaker. Imagine adding all this new technology to enhance your message for the greater good, leading us to peace. So in this age of ideas, what if you invest in a skill that will increase your value by 50%? Imagine investing in a skill that will make all of your relationships magical. Imagine investing in a skill that will lead you to more success. So my goal for you is if you would please stand up. And I want to anchor this message inside of your minds. Elevate your reach, improve your speech. Elevate your reach, improve your speech. And our ultimate goal when it comes to communication, being part of the 21st century, is I want people to tell you, I will stand in the rain to hear you speak. Thank you.